everyone how you doing I hope you're well so today I'm going to do a all-in-one video I usually don't do those um, and prefer to show you book reviews uh, of every single book separately but um, this is going to take forever if I do just just book by book and I have loads of videos lined up so yeah I decided to do um, kind of like a short introduction of every book uh, in one video and then do let me know in the comment box um, which book you'd love to see first um, reviewed so the same way as we've done it before with the other three books um, <clears throat> You know, the Shirley um, Sherwood collection, the Georgia Keefe and the Extraordinary Things to Cut Out, where I asked you um, to vote which book you'd uh, like to uh, see most. And then I uh, gave you all the reviews anyhow, um, but just in that order so that I know which is more desired. So um, let's start. So I've got a couple of books here, or I have actually five books here, um, two of which are photography books. And I have to say, every single one of those books is just pure perfection. Sometimes when you buy books, um, I bought all of these on Amazon, sometimes when you buy them online, you can, it's sort of like a hit and a miss situation. All of these I find are just absolutely superb books. So first of all, I have the uh, two books on photography here. So the first one um, is called Photographers on Photography, How the Masters See, Think and Shoot. It's by Henry Carroll. So basically it's a small book and here are all the um, um, you know photographers included here and it's their professional opinion on photography so um, it's kind of like a like a photo is given to a photographer to analyze and give the um, you know like a conclusion of, of, of sort of thoughts and the style so this is a great inspiration so here are all the photographers uh, listed in the contents there are definitely some that I'm already familiar with and so um, I actually been to the Irving Pan exhibition he shot these black and white photography which just you know when you take the color away from photography it becomes about the subject and he did it so masterful like just um, genius Anyway, so yeah, if you want to be inspired by certain things and learn a little bit more from photographers and um, see what, you know, photography can be about and why. So what I learned from this book is that there are two main aspects about photography, realism and telling a story. So um, either you're taking a picture to convey, you know, like a a realistic representation of what it actually is or what is happening in time like you know history or whatever it could be or something that turns into history you know those moments that obviously we know in photography or you're taking a picture to suggest something maybe you catch a certain expression on someone who didn't know that was photographed things like that you know or it could be a subject of um, something completely or like an object of something completely irrelevant you might think but once you look into the photo you start kind of developing thoughts towards it so I thought that's a really neat picture and again um, this is something I want to sit down when finally I can do that because um, schools should be starting soon uh, which we had fantastic news about and so maybe just an hour sitting in the garden on a sunny day with a cup of something to drink and just you know read through the photographer's um, thoughts and things. So that's that book. Next book is called The Dramatic Portrait, The Art of Crafting Light and Shadow uh, and it's by Chris Knight. So this book I bought not just to learn about photography but mainly about um, shadow and light. So there is a great history of um, photography in the beginning of the book 
and then we explore light and shade. I am particularly interested in the portraits when it comes to shade and light. I wish they picked another <laughs> guy here. <laughs> they picked this bearded um, man, which is not very appealing. I wish it was sort of like a different face. Um, so he's repeated through quite a chunk of book where they show a different angle of light and how that impacts the, the photo of it and the expression of the face and um, so it teaches you a lot. So this book would be fantastic if you want to learn about photography because it's really really done in a contemporary and professional and refreshing way so um, it's done really well. Oh this wouldn't be this guy better for that part of the uh, um, of the book but yeah so and then we have the chapter three taking shape shaping the light mood and face and um, I was interested in this type of photography where it doesn't matter whether it's a man or a woman I don't like the beard because that takes off a lot of the face part of the picture. When you have a face, what I want to do is to learn more about shading. So you can see here how where the highlights um, drop and the shadow is closed. You can see sometimes, depending on what shape of the face it is, if it's the um, cheekbone here, the line is quite sort of you know sharp if it's the forehead it's a very soft shading so this type of shading is what you need to learn when you want to do character or face illustrations again loads and loads of this sort of inspiration here and then this was quite useful as well how color manipulates there is the Michelle Eugene Chevreul's color wheel 1839 so this was the first color wheel um, actually put together so it says here, these 72 color divisions are an early attempt to systematically organize color. So that's quite interesting. All these color wheels we are interested in to dye. And yeah, this just goes through color and the focus of it and things like that. But you can see there's loads of pictures where you can um, learn about, again, the shadowing and how you sort of turn your face. You can see very dark here and there where my finger goes and then quite dark behind it. You can use these pictures as a um, inspiration for drawing. So it's a great book and yeah so that's for my, I'll just show you quickly for my illustrations here. Um, I'm going to try and sort of work on the shadowing, um, you know, looking at those pictures and learning a little bit more about shading and, and highlighting. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So Urban Botanics, an indoor plant guide for modern gardeners. So this is by Maike Coaster and Emma Sibley. And I'll just bring it up here in case I butcher the names. Now, this book is fantastic for uh, if you love plants and you want to use them in your interior design and um, yeah, and learn about them. So it's got a large picture of a plant and then the brief description about what it sort of needs um, in terms of caring for it and uh, its characteristics and they're all it looks like done with watercolor so the style is really um, contemporary botanical um, style so I enjoy that here's the fiddle leaf fig and um, yeah so this kind of ticks the purpose for both for uh, inspiration for botanical illustration as well as actually learning about these uh, plants because I went to garden shop a few times now and started buying more plants and it just the house looks a lot more kind of cozy to me when there are little plants everywhere 
um, dotted around and then also I pick a nice kind of pot to go with it so yeah it becomes part of the interior design um, but also just looking at them and that's actually one of the things I wanted to do is starting a new series which will be me painting every one of those plants that I have added to our household so that's that next one is called a year in flowers so it says here florid farms and new york times bestseller um i'm not surprised it's a stunning book and it's just gorgeous it's a real treat it feels like it's a hardcover so this one is 2020 so it's a new book and basically it's about this lady, Erin Benzakane. She is a floral um, designer and I, I read a little bit of her story where she, um, as many of us, became a mother, had um, felt like she had, uh, you know, maybe more to her life than just looking after children, which is a huge, huge job and responsibility, but sometimes to keep sanity we need something else as well to you know inspire us she then started thinking about business ideas tried a few things and realized in the end that flowers were her thing so let's look into the contents so we have getting started design essential techniques seasonal bouquets summer autumn spring winter and a to z ingredient guide so this book essentially is great if you actually want to learn about how to put stunning bouquets so these bouquets are the type of bouquets that i would love um, in my house so they're not the, the boring type <laughs> they have the structure the shape of them the textural effect and everything that comes with it um, from a fantastically designed bouquet and also it's great for inspiration for if you want to paint water, um, watercolor or other mediums of um, botanical, you know, paintings. So it's also fantastic for color inspiration, like a color palette, because she puts them beautifully together, thinking about all of those things, as I mentioned before, texture, structure and color. And apart from learning, um, how to do those bouquets, what you need to have and how you start and uh, all sorts of things, how you arrange them. It is, you know, mostly just a stunning book to look at. I'll just give you a quick flip and look at the colors and color palettes are stunning. So she goes through and explains, um, you know, actually because it's called A Year in Flowers, she goes through the year and explains what works best in which um, season. So, for instance, here we've got spring, and then she explains what foliage, what flowers work best seasonally, and um, it's arranged beautifully, as you can see, beautifully photographed, um, very contemporary way of looking at botanicals, and fantastic so let me just give you another flip through so here we're going now again look at those beautiful color palettes and textures and, and whatnot there's some bridal bouquets as well which have beautiful colors to them very similar to what i had for mine and for um peony lovers this is stunning Here we go, some beautiful greens and whites. I used to grow these tulips, but they disappeared somewhere in the ground. So yeah, like I said, look at that. You know, there's uh, the uh, daffodils, but how many of them? Such a big variety, and so you just can look at any one of those that you want to um, try and paint. And then they're also arranged in bouquets. It's, it's done so beautifully and, you know, because they are arranged in colours, it makes it um, very kind of enjoyable. Look at those beautiful flowers. I mean, if you're not sold yet, <laughs> then flowers is not your thing. But honestly, this is stunning. 
I was looking for a bouquet book for quite a while and finally found this one beautiful a bit of lilac next to those peaches with a bit of green perfect color palette yeah so there we go then it's autumn and I think it finishes with winter and uh, as there is not much to do in winter there are few fewer flowers but she still shows you how to arrange those and then the color palette changes to a winter appropriate now this is a beautiful winter bouquet isn't it Okay, next one we have Flower Market Botanical Style at Home. So these two books are more of interior design including flowers, which is quite a unique twist and I didn't know there is such a niche kind of, um, you know, movement, but um, it definitely is worth exploring. It is by Michelle Mason. And let's see what year this book is published in. Again, stunning photography, 2019, so not too long ago. And contents, we have inspiration by season, inspiration by color. Again, color palettes is a very important thing when it comes to bouquets. So it offers that already with uh, the, the you know pictures of looking at flowers. Decorations and display at home, plants, flowers at home, and arranging flowers at home as well. And here is the author, Michelle Mason, and she is also passionate about interior design and um, including flowers in that part. So I think she ran a little shop as well, or maybe she still does. Inspiration by Season. So again, you know, this is more um, including interior design, so not just pictures of flowers, although there is plenty of them, but also looking at textures of furniture, the um, pots and things like that to present them in, and, you know, what sort of style of home would fit which bouquet. And again, pictures are stunning, loads of colour, very uplifting. Look at that, turquoise. That's right up my alley. Isn't that just a beautiful arrangement of things? So this is the autumn, and look at that. Beautiful, just really, really pretty. And loads of other colour palettes. I love this picture with the greens, I don't know why, but I've never thought of cutting a twig of cherry um, tree and just sort of putting it in a nice green basic uh, bottle, glass bottle, and um, arranging it that way. Very chic. Okay, so there we go. More colour, so I suppose this is probably summer now maybe or maybe still spring because I can notice uh, mimosa and actually my mimosa is now flowering or just started and we are um, end of February so maybe it's springtime yeah must be spring oh, look at that isn't that just gorgeous this is my type of a bouquet it's got a shape and it's got different textures and the colors just stunning I love unusual tulips like that. Put them in my garden as well. Okay, so you get the idea. Beautiful. Finally, the last book is called Wild Interiors and it's by Hilton Carter. Now, this is beautiful plants in beautiful spaces and uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful book. Let's just start. So, and let's, first of all, I mean, look at that. The representation here in this book is very contemporary so compared to the book we just saw this is a more kind of contemporary style version of it uh, it is beautifully arranged and it is 2020 published in 2020 and here is the man himself and he talks about how plants are such a major part of our lives and how they you know make it how they finish the interior 
this looks very much like the one in yeah it is the Royal Botanical Gardens in Kew. I went there before they shut to renovate so I haven't been there since the renovation and I actually have a picture standing on this staircase just about here and um, it's just beautiful there and hopefully at some point I <laughs> can go back to London to visit it and yeah so here we go uh, it tells you about the the plants and it tells you about how to care for them and then it dives into interior and some of the images that you'll see here it's literally like a jungle um, of all sorts of things but it, yeah I mean these these things take time to care for so I'd imagine how much time it takes to water all of that goodness and especially if you need to go on a holiday that was my first thought when you need to go away um, what what do you do then but um, yeah not that it's a problem at the minute okay so look at that look at that beauty I mean the decor is just right up my alley I absolutely love it beautiful photography so much inspiration okay so I will leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me know again which one you'd prefer to see first if you wanted to see a full book review uh, with a bit more detail. That is it for today. Thanks for watching and see you soon.